content to simply observe the experiences of fellow Hispanic employees and American corporations. Sonia Alvarez Robinson has chosen to bear witness in a unique way to the processes of acculturation and assimilation of Hispanic employees by examining the lived experience of these people as mediated via affinity groups within American corporations. The result is an exciting piece of research that yields deeply useful insights into this intriguing experience of incorporation of yet another people and another dimension of the American experience as it unfolds. I introduce to you Dr. Sonia Alvarez Robinson. Hey! Boricua! Yes, yes. <laughs> Six years ago, in an extraordinary hotel in a beautiful city of Santa Barbara, California, they asked our new student group to envision this day. They asked us to close our eyes and imagine how we would be feeling, what we would be thinking, and what we would be saying. And I have to tell you that this moment is nothing like I envisioned <laughs> at that time. A lot happens in a span of six years. But the thing that I under anticipated the most was the extraordinary gratitude that I would feel at this moment. I feel such extreme appreciation for the things that before I had taken for granted. The ability to think, to learn, to articulate and to appreciate the depth of the intellectual inquiry. I also under anticipated how much I would appreciate the involvement of the faculty in my life, not just academically, but also personally. On that very first day at NSO, I had the great pleasure of meeting Dr. Margo Okazawa Ray who was my mentor and who became an extraordinary friend and who has helped me through some enormous personal challenges. Soon after that, I met Dr. Georgia Persons, who became not just a person to push me, challenge me, but also expand my thinking in exciting and new ways. I under-anticipated how powerful my dissertation committee, Dr. David Willis, Dr. Leonard Baca, and my student reader, Gloria Gutierrez would be to help me really take my thinking to new heights. And I under anticipated how powerful my experience as a mom would be to my academic journey, that first course in human development. And I'll never forget reading Becoming Mature Childhood Ghosts and Spirits in Adult Life. Most of you are familiar with that work. And I wrote a lot and shared it with my sons, and they kept saying, Mom, you really haven't been that bad on us. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank them for letting me experiment on them and learn about myself through that experience. I appreciate my employer, PricewaterhouseCoopers, who've not only supported me financially in this journey, but have given me some extraordinary opportunities to bridge my academic work with my professional practice. It's taken me four continents and 13 countries over the last six years and doing some amazing organizational development work. And I'm so thankful uh, to them for the opportunity. But they say that true appreciation often comes when you lose something. And I today appreciate so much the undeniable, unrelenting, just extraordinary support of my husband, Scott Robinson, who was an educator who was always there to challenge me, expose me to new learning, new reading, new literature, who was looking forward to this day today even more than I was, and who 
never stopped encouraging me and telling me how extraordinary I was. He, in fact, every KA knowledge area that I completed, he gave me a card to congratulate me. Five weeks ago, my champion, my soulmate, left this earth. He took his last breath. And I miss him, and so as I am rejoicing, I am so grateful that I had 13 amazing years with him. He is here with me in his spirit. I am saddened that he's not here physically, but I am such a better person for all that he gave me. And the thing that he taught me that I think was most powerful was to appreciate every moment, not just every day, every moment. Every time the clock would turn 111 or 1111, he would send me a text that would say, you are my number one, you are the only one, you are the one, and we are one. We often joke that his major was leisure studies. <laughs> they say you need a yin and a yang. So while I was always intensely focused on achievement and getting, I've got four college degrees now, he was always more focused on the relationships, the things that are central. And I often told him that what I do maintains us, but what you do sustains us. Hmm. Right. So, if there's one thing I can leave with you that I learned the most and that I appreciate is that while it's good to have an end to journey toward, it's the journey that counts in the end. Yeah.